Dave from Hot War Games, hi. What's your full name, sir? Uh, David J. Lewis. Generally. Wow, that is like an author name. Yeah, well, it's only that's only because Dave is like Dave. <laughs> <laughs> an author name. That's what you should be like, Dave. Yeah, Lewis. there's a lot of Dave Lewis's out there, so. <laughs> that is wicked. Um, so you are the maker, master, creator, pretty much on your own of Drop Zone Commander. Yeah. Yeah, we pretty were, much. We were chatting earlier, and he said everything in here, and this is a big book, is entirely done by right, Dave. Yeah, all well, the, the design of the models, the painting, the writing of the background, the writing of the rules, the photography, sculpting of the little men, everything really. Apart from the um, apart from the layout, I had help on the layout because I'm not a book publisher, so I had some help there. But still, so that is some pretty impressive and work. A, and obviously we had a lot of people involved in playtesting, it wasn't just me on my own, you know, doing the rules, but no, I did write the rules, but we had a lot of other playtesters and things involved there, so... Now, I'm a beginner, a, a real beginner of all games mm. in general. This is my first year with anything to do with it. Explain to me, in the most basic of terms, what is Drop Zone Commander? Drop Zone Commander is a 10mm game uh, for pretty large battles, with mostly with vehicles and dropships, but the dropships are the main focus. So the idea is that you might start with an empty table, with yeah. some buildings and things, and then you fly in your troops by dropship and they drop in, usually to achieve something like capture an objective or hold ground or move something around. It's not really a static kind of game. So it's game. Yeah, yeah, and then, then fly them off the table mm -hmm. afterwards generally or move them around or there's all different, it's very heavily scenario based. But you always think Black Hawk Down with this game. Uh -huh. That's kind of, that's what you need to uh -huh. people, people who don't know anything about it, it's like Battle of Mogadishu is that yeah. sort of. That's how I envisage the game to play, I suppose. In the whole game is written around the dropships and the whole concept of dropships and speed and mobility. It's all about. It's a very tactical game. It's not. It's less of a combat game and more of a tactical game. So you work on stuff like points, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. It's a what's the average? System. What's the typically uh, typical game? About one thousand to one thousand five hundred to two thousand points. It seems to be the sweet spot. That's what most people are saying, and that's what I think as well. But you can play massive games. You, you could go silly. You could go ten thousand points. Mm -hmm. The skirmish game, skirmish level games. The game actually scales in that there are three sizes of game: the skirmish, clash, or battle. Okay. And as you um, you choose your whole army, is based on the size of the game. So a lot of parameters change as you go up. In the battle size. Right. So it's designed to work with these massive games or with this very small skirmish with just the starter sets alone are enough to play a good hour, hour and a half of game. So that's the estimated time for a, for a solid game? Solid, yeah, a game, I mean if you really knew what you were doing in both players you could easily play a game with the starter sets in an hour but mm. you know you're learning and it will take a bit and generally the 1,500 point 2,000 game will, will be about two hours, two and a half hours, something like that depending on how fast you are as a gamer. We're both like swaying. We're swiveling on the chairs, yeah. Because we've got small chairs here, so... And you've got your, your mug? What's in the mug? Cup of tea. The British way. Yeah. Didn't get a lot of sleep. No, it's <laughs> ice this, this is quite a way away from where I'm based, so... Where are you based? <laughs> um, just outside London. Outside London. And we're, we're in Preston, so any of you who are not English viewers, it's about a six hour train journey and maybe a seven hour car. car yeah, journey. something like that's fun. <laughs> so, there's been a lot of buzz around this and I've had lots and lots of people looking forward to an interview with you. Yeah. Why? Why is this? Um, well, I, th I think um, it's funny, when we launched at Salute and we made a big impact there because you know, nobody knew anything about us at all before we went to Salute and suddenly bang, you're hit with a whole range of a new game. And I think I tried to go the extra mile all the time. It's mm -hmm. like, you don't really have to put detail underneath things, but I do. And, you don't like have to have quite that much detail, but we do, and you know we've pushed the envelope with casting and what you can do with resin, and how good the resin itself is, and the, the imagery, the nature of the game, the concept of it. It hasn't really been done properly before. I think a lot of people are waiting for a game like this to come along, and it has, and we've we've timed it quite well, I think, and you know people have really been enjoying it. No, it's been nothing great. Nothing but great things. Oh, it's been great. I mean, it's been a, an insane couple of months. I mean, <laughs> it's just um, I haven't really had time to do anything other than work on on this, and you know, it's a bit of a juggernaut really at the moment. So sort of steering it is, but that's that's 
part of the fun, really. So, <laughs> out of everything that you've done, which is a hell of a lot of work for mm. this is pretty much all on your shoulders, what is your baby? What is your favourite thing about it? The Shoutari, I think. Okay. Um, as, like, because obviously I'm a designer anyway, but the UCM are what you, there's, I mean, I know a lot of people with Robert Army like the UCM, they're very human, they're very modern human military sci fi style, which I love that style as well, I'm a big fan of aliens. and pretty obvious really. <laughs> so I wanted those to be in there but you know they're they're all new designs. I don't I try not to copy anyone. But you know they're fairly the people have seen the style before whereas the Shaltari are completely fresh I think and there's nothing really like them out there and they were the hardest ones to pin down design wise. It took me a long time to really decide what I wanted to do with them and you know they play fun as well. I I like the Shaltari myself but that's that's mainly for the design reasons really. <laughs> so when are you starting to, are you properly releasing everything now to be on yeah. sale? Yeah, yeah, basically, I mean we um, we had, we've obviously, there's been a lot of things on the internet, we've had a lot of issues with the stock at the start because of the sheer level of demand, I mean we, we were all family funded at the start and mm -hmm. it was basically, it was my money and then that money ran out and then it was my dad's money and there was only so much of that I could risk and at the time before Salute having worked on my own for three months in, you know, in isolation pretty much and kept it really, really secret so not no one had seen it really and I made a decision on how much stock we should have at the start and it turned out to be wrong um, and then as soon as we knew, literally the day after Salute, when we knew how much we really need to be making, we scaled up and the machines got delivered late so we didn't have enough stock at launch and that's been we've been catching up ever since, but we're doing really well now. We've, we're actually running a night shift for the next month to cover the cover the demand. We sent about busy man. about eighty percent of what we make has gone out to stores roughly. But there's obviously there's a lot of stores in the world and they all want it, so it's just a case of you know getting getting them out there. I mean we we holding nothing. Everything we make goes straight out the door pretty yep. much. So it's just a case of burning through those orders. You know we're making a lot of kits a day now, so. We're getting, we're getting through them, and when we have got through them, we've got even more casting machines on order now. And, I mean, we're not basing our timings on those because last time we learned never to assume anything. You know, you, you think you're told a delivery date and you go with it, and it turns out not to be true. But when we get them, that will speed things up even more. So we're working our hardest to speed up, and you know, they should be in stores everywhere. There's, I think it's not staying on the shelf in a lot of places, it's, it's going in and it's going straight out on. That's the case here. Yeah. I find it. When I when I went to get Dave, uh, there's a gaming room, and I think about six people were asking for a demo game, and I had to quickly steal him so he could get a cheeky <laughs> interview in before he's going to be busy for the rest of the yeah, day. When I get roped into a demo game, that's it. I'll just get involved. And <laughs> you can tell your yeah. heart and soul has gone into this. Yeah. It's an impressive work, and and you're a top guy as well. There's a lot of things like things things of like. The parts of the project that were like horrible to do, like it's the clean, worst bit. The worst bit, cleaning up masters, is the worst bit. So say every component. I mean, there's I don't know, it's about 300, 400 different components as part of the range. Oh my god! And every component, um, it gets it, a lot of the tanks are all um, digital sculpts, and then the infantry are all hand sculpts, one to one. I don't scale down. I just do them in one to one, and then that's it. Um, but the tanks, basically, there's still a lot of handwork to be done on those because there's a lot of cleaning up of the style of rapid prototype that we use is very high end, which is how we're able to achieve the detail. But the downside of that is it requires a lot more manual labour afterwards to clean those up. So, say it's about a month to clean up all the prototypes, and then every one of those gets copied 20 times or so to make submasters. Those all need manually cleaning up. Yeah, we mastered in metal actually because um, they held up better after continued reuse. But um, if you're casting stuff, but that was you know, thousands and thousands of components. Imagine cleaning up thousands of metal components to kind of presentation standard. That took like two, two and a half months of just you know repetitive strain injury. And <laughs> yeah, I mean your hands are just destroyed after that. That was the worst part of the whole project, and I didn't enjoy that. But. It's all that's the family money thing. I mean, I couldn't pay anyone to do it. I had to do it, and that's um, part of because we've managed to do an awful lot, a very big project. I mean, you know, we are a small company. We're growing very quickly. Now we're massively, hugely bigger than we were at Salute. And this is all all off your own back. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Pretty much, yeah. It's I mean, all your hard work to get to this place, and I I can't stress how busy he's been all day. <laughs> it's been. Um, 
it's it's been it's been mad. It's been a weird conversion actually from one way of working to another. I feel another. a bit shy now. Thank <laughs> you. And you're all in front. Oh, that's all right. I'm, I, oh, well, it's funny to say that. It is. <laughs> and I've, I've gone from, say, like, not knowing anyone and nobody knowing me to, to the other way around very quickly, and that's been unusual to Do get used to that. Do you find it Not really, no. I've, I might have done, but I didn't. I didn't know how I was going to find it until it actually happened. Yes. Yeah. I think I did all right at Salute, and, you know, after that, I thought, realised I can do these things, and then it gets easier after that. So where, where are you going to be in the next... Uh, year or so that we can find you at any events you're going? Oh yeah, um, I mean we would rather go to more events. We booked our stand for Salute already next year. That's bigger than last year's stand and we've got some plans there. Um, and we want to go to Gen Con next year. We couldn't make it this year because it was just... I might, it was too, I might go. It was Gen Con. Gen Con's going to be good. I mean, I'm, last year, Gen Con, the way I look at it is you, you go big or you go home and we didn't, just didn't have time to do it properly, do it justice properly. We had our um, American distributors were playtesting out there, so we're not playtesting, demoing obviously out there, so we had a presence, but this year coming we want to go and do it properly and be there and meet people in America because that's a big market for us and a lot of our stuff is going out to the States, the Americans love yeah. our stuff, which is cool. Um, so we definitely want to be there next year and other smaller shows as well, like I don't know, I love going to places and, you know, like here for example, coming up here, you know, I love doing days like this. And, I want to do more of those and be out there and meet people and things. I enjoy it. So absolutely. So, yeah. um, I think with the amount. I mean, I, I, Nick opened the store at about nine o'clock this morning, and mm. there were queues outside of the door. It's been heaving all day, and I mean, they've done an amazing job, and you know, they've invited loads of people up here as well. So. I think everyone's having a really good time and you know there's a lot you can see the amount of effort that's gone into this. Oh yeah, yeah, no, the store's been the store's awesome really. It's got, like, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a lot of room to expand here too that's coming from there's like loads of floors and things like we're, we're sort of away from we're at the top floor at the moment, sort of away from all the you can hear all the noise all the gaming going on down there. Yeah. <laughs> but there's allocated rooms for certain things. I think there's a painting room where yeah. the word the painting well, guys. Several painting stuff. rooms really, yeah. Several. <laughs> They've got their, their massive, fully stocked. I was shocked at that actually, the amount of stuff they've got there and the range of. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've not messed about. I, I haven't it's seen, good. I've never heard of some of the things that they've got here, but you know, mm. there's loads of people watching. And uh, yeah, they've got the gaming rooms, the painting rooms, the office. I've been hanging out in the office stealing the worthy painting computer. Hopefully, <laughs> 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 he won't watch the video. Yeah. He might, probably will. <laughs> But yeah, I've had a great day. And what, what are the plans for the rest of your day? Um, well, here I'm, I'm just going to go around, and uh, a lot of people want demos, and they're running demos anyway. But I'm going to get involved in those because it's fun to watch people play the game anyway and get involved there. And, and judge them. And just, well, you judge them. Just they get it wrong. No, no, no. I mean, Drop Zone is a game that it, it rewards experience. And if you're not, you know, the first time you play, if you play a, a pro against a beginner, say the beginner will always get beaten. It's, all, it's very skill based, you, know, you learn the pitfalls, so it punishes you quite badly if you make errors, but that's the whole tactical side of things. But when you learn you get better, and, you know, two, two beginners will make, generally make the same mistake, especially if they're used to other games, you know, they'll, they'll leave you and it's exposed when they shouldn't, or they'll, you know, various things, but that's all part of the fun and it's, that's a learning curve thing, but it's great for demos because, you know, it's, you, you pick up again quite fast, generally I've, teach people to play, I can usually, they pretty much get it after about an hour of play or half an hour of play, they're, they're kind of into the game and it's quite easy, it's easy to learn hard to master, I think other people have said and that's the sort of game I wanted to write anyway, so there's a lot of replay value and you've got years worth of getting better in there, yeah. in building, you know, trying new scenarios, new build layouts, the scenery thing is really, really, really important, how you build your board, you know, you can build games around scenery or build build sort of army lists around them or build scenery and then build an army list, but you know, it's that, but that's part of the fun, it's like that, to be infinitely replayable really and it different every really time. It sounds really massive. Yeah, it's very, um, so I went for sort of a theatrical sort of yeah. involved sort of very cinematic kind of style is what I wanted to, wanted to get with the, with the way the game looks and the way it plays as well, because that's rather than the, the sort of just line up and smash kind of thing. There's a lot of games out there that do that very well already, so I yeah, don't want to just do that. Um, oh, and how, what, what 
what kind? I don't know, like secret advice. Secret advice for, for new players. Um, favourite things. Um, well, obviously, you're writing an army, take a balanced army. The game is written around that. If you try and stack your army with one kind of unit, you're going to suffer, probably. Okay. Having a little bit of everything is a good way of, right, of making a good, art, good balanced army. See, it perfect, doesn't. perfect advice. That's a useful one. So balance is, the game is all written for balance and things like that. And on the, the hobby side, which I've, a lot of people are asking me about how these things are made and painted, I've said on Facebook already that I'm going to do paint guides, but I've just been so busy, it's just like every time I, I really want to be able to get some time to do them and we're getting new people in and then I'll have more time and we can get those out and tell people how they're all painted. But in essence, inks are your friend, dry brushing is your friend, obviously. Um, a lot of the ones in the book are all manually highlighted, which is very, very labour intensive, but looks good, but you know, I wouldn't advise it for gaming purposes. Yeah. Little one for Shaltari and Scourge players, if you want to make your, um, your tanks float and look cool, uh, get a really, very really fine drill bit, put a few little holes underneath and put a few little fibre optic rods in. Just little, so obviously you won't see them and the models are really light, so they won't buckle. So then you've got your floating tanks without a base. Which is a nice little thing. It looks cool. That's awesome. I was going to do it for the rule book, but they're not. It's not stock like that. So everything in the rule book is stock. The stuff you can actually buy that's not been converted. But that's a simple little conversion that anyone Scourge or Shantari player can do, which is kind of cool. Little random tip that I thought I'd chuck in there anyway. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. That's always helpful. I think. Are you going to be expanding to some more like YouTube tutorials and guides? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm new to the whole YouTube thing, and you know. You'll be friends on YouTube. I do, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of I do a lot of photography. Photography is like my hobby. And aside from everything, what everything in here, you did. Yeah, yeah. That's all my photography. It's about ten to fifteen thousand frames or something. I want to win now. <laughs> on my way over. <laughs> Hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of photos, all done really well. Yeah, I know my, I know my photography, but I don't know my videos. So I learn, and we, because we have actually got a YouTube channel, we've got some subscribers, even though we've got nothing on there yet. Um, but I want to expand into that side of thing. I mean, YouTube is great and yeah. a good way of showing people. I'm quite, I'm big into free content as well, like our buildings and things like that. And, I think every game should have some free content that helps players get into it and helps them make armies or, you know, and the scenery because the, the game really, really needs buildings. I mean, you can play games without buildings, but it plays best with buildings, but it's an expense, you know, so that's why I'm going for the free ones because then you can play the game properly how it was meant to be played without having to shell out loads of money on scenery. If you don't want to, you know, that's what they're there for. They're all in the download section. It's a bit buried on the site. You go to the bottom of the page and there's downloads and that'll take you to a page with yeah. there's roads on there as well so you can put a road system together and everything. There's nice. rules for that. there's rules for roads as well if you want to put them in. You know, it's, it's kind of cool. So you can build them I and mean, they've built a couple of tables here with those downloadable buildings. It's useful for stores as well because you know that our scenery isn't available yet. It will be soon. We're working on that now. Um, our retail scenery, but you know, in the meantime you've got a free option which is nice. So, would you estimate everything to be fully available? Um, well, it, it depends on how long it stays on shelves, really. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean our, um, our backlog at the moment, in terms of everybody's, that covers restocks as well, for yeah. people who've ordered restocks already. That goes out until probably halfway through October, roughly. But that's, there's, there's some big orders in there, so that covers that. And obviously, our direct side, we try and ship out within two weeks for models. Um, and then it's just a case of how long it stays on shelves for, and then obviously we restock as we can. I mean, we're making just shy of a thousand kits a day at the moment. I don't want to say kit, I mean a blister pack, also obviously a starter army's got, say, seven of those in, so, you know, I've been very upfront about how much we can make, always, because it gives people an idea of where we are, and yeah. we're expanding there, and when the new machines arrive, we'll be doing better. So we can we can currently make stuff at a decent pace. It's just a case of wiping the backlog out, and then we can move on from there, really. So let's talk pricing for beginners. If you wanted to start with, as you were saying, one thousand two hundred points. Yeah. Roughly, how much with everything included? With that. Something like that. Well, the starter army is sixty-eight quid. 
and that's got um, everything you need to play, like a basic starter game. Everything in that box is all useful models that you will definitely need in all your games. There's not like any, um, any well, it's basically bikes, let's just say that. <laughs> There's none of those models that you get in the starter set that you think, oh, I don't think I'll use those. Yeah. You'll, you'll use everything in there. Um, and then it's just, yeah, blisters, you know, at the store discount, obviously, as well, you know, you, you might have saved 10% maybe, sometimes. Um, so, probably about 130 to 150 quid, I suppose, for a decent sized force that's good for, you know, for trying out all the game mechanics. You'll have some fighters in there, command units, um, all that. Commanders in drop zone, you don't actually pay money. You, you've got command units that you can put your commanders in, but your actual commander, the man himself, or woman obviously, is this is the man or woman in a funny hat and you just pay points for them and they go in that vehicle. So nice. the super duper commander doesn't cost you any more than a than a little lonely squad leader or something. Cool. And so yeah it's about 140 quid, 150 quid or so I suppose. That absolute setup. Yeah yeah that's like complete the whole lot. And obviously your scenery's free if you want to use the downloadable stuff. So it's you know it's it's it's, it's it's not the cheapest game out there, I know that, but we're breaking a lot of ground and we're a very small company and that costs us a lot, you know. But so. the attention, care and effort, uh, and I think um, when I was downstairs, there was someone opening and was just amazed. I think it was, where is it? It was one of these. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the little anti-air tanks, the rapier. Yep. Yeah. That's was opening and was just talking to his friend for about five minutes of the detail. So it's little things like that I, that I think really catch people's attention. And if you're really interested in something like that, money tends to be able to spend that kind of money anyway. Yeah, I mean, these the resin side, like to do resin properly is, is not so much about the cost of the resin. You get, say, compared to a model that maybe weighs three times more, you know, it's a big block of resin. Oh, that's not the same. Well, it's not because it's just resin as a material. We're using the most expensive, the best resin that we can possibly get our hands on. But that's not so much the reason for the cost. It's the labour and the skill that goes into actually making these things. So it's quality and time. Yeah, it's, it's the time. It's it's the, the actual hand making process of the casting. But that's where the cost comes from. It's not the actual material cost is lesser in that thing, it's, it's basically the skill of it and you know, it's very skilled work and it's all made in the UK which helps from a quality standpoint, you know, makes it more expensive for us to produce it but it means the models are a lot better in the end, you know, you're getting really top end stuff and that's what we always wanted to do, you know, really kind of do the best models we could possibly make, always that's the way we try and do everything really, not cut corners and not do dodgy models or anything like that. It's like um, it's not about pushing wow. out thousands of releases as quick as we can, it's more about taking our time on each one and doing it right and making it as good as we can make it. I know about dodgy models. Oh yeah, yeah there's a uh, that's mixed bag really. That I've had some good ones and I've had some bad ones. I've had all bad ones. I, I think it's yeah. just really unfortunate but I've had very bad bubbly but I have ones. to take them back. Kind of jobs. Yeah. I can't make stuff. I'm very terrible. Yeah. <laughs> right now, I'm an absolute beginner. Yeah. But was there anything that you wanted to add as a, a side note to talk about your your baby of a project? Um, my baby of the project. Well, I've got years worth of plans for this. So if you get into drop zone, you know that I'm. I mean, as long as I don't drop dead or anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're as a company, we're expanding and we're trying to do better all the time. And. Yeah, we can get into more things, but I've got years worth of plans for Drop Zone. There you know, expansions, and each expansion, when they are out, will advance the storyline. Because at the moment, we're talking the UCM, which is the main human protagonist, have just reinvaded territories lost to them a few hundred years previously before the background starts. And the, the background in that book starts just as that invasion is launched. And subsequent expansions will advance that storyline so you know where they've gone. You know, that's when new things will start to be introduced. I mean, I, I won't give much away now because you know we've launched with a really big range, and there's a lot to be there's a lot to be getting on with as, as it is. So I don't want to sort of, but we have got plans for more, and there will be more. Will you tell me secrets in the future? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, I will. Um, there's yeah, I'll be. Um, I'll be dropping little hints and all sorts of things like that. Just spam on my Facebook be like, got some secrets for you, and then I'll have to get on Skype. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, 
to getting some new stuff out there, but at the moment our primary focus is just on getting it to everybody who wants it first, as it is now. I mean, you know, there's no point in pushing for new releases when there's still people yeah. waiting for their models. So we've, we've got to get those out first, and then when that's done. So once the backlog yeah, is complete, completely cleared, done, then we move on to, to new stuff because it's not fair on those people, and we have to focus on that. Absolutely. That's, that's just my. That's just been my consuming things in yeah. the last like, two months, just been you know, doing doing everything possible to get that moving as fast as we can. And, I know, think we should probably go get a coffee. I think we're both getting like the... Yeah, yeah, yeah coffee. coffee. Yeah, I, live off, I live off coffee, obviously. Coffee and, coffee and Relentless, yeah, it was really bad actually. Near the end of the rule book we were doing really... Me and the guy who does not though you does the putting the actual, the publishing side together. The two of us were working stupid hours for the last three weeks and that was just, at the end you look at the day in your hands like this and you're going, like, oh no, I need to get some sleep now really. <laughs> just sitting in a desk, like, yeah. Yeah, actually I did do, we both, I, I think he fell asleep in his chair and I did a few times as well, near the end. We had quite an ambitious release schedule, you know, possibly too ambitious in hindsight, but, but hindsight goals. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, everything's gone really well. We you know the game's been very well received and that's very been nice because this is my first game that I've entirely done myself. I've been involved in playtesting of other ones and things, but this is my first one. It's actually me, just just me doing it, and I didn't really know that it was going to be a big, you know, that it was going to go down well, and it has done. So that's the, that's the biggest relief for me, and that was a big relief. I am, yeah, yes. Yeah, Good. It's a weird, weird thing anyway. <laughs> I, I know what you mean when when you put so much work into something, and yeah. then, you know. Because you know, you've exploded on YouTube as well, and that's kind of... <laughs> a, li a little bit. I think um, after the ATC video being a really painful task to put together, mm. and, uh, and that went really well, I think that was a, a huge relief and weight off my shoulders. I can imagine that this going really well, and all the time, blood, sweat and tears has just yeah. made it all worth it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, you, know, you, you get rewarded by working hard, always. Yeah. That's kind of it. You know, I always go on that. I'm terribly lazy as well. It's taken some time <laughs> <laughs> to start working properly. Yeah. But yeah, you should be really proud. It's it's awesome. Cheers. Thank you. Lovely talking Cheers. to you. Um, Cheers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>